And now, Thriller Thursdays on the Mutual Audio Network. The following audio drama is rated PG for parental guidance. The Hawk Chronicles follow the adventures of Detective Kate Hawk, who went from a Baltimore police detective to intergalactic investigator, from fighting crime on the streets to crime in the stars. In the last episode of The Hawk Chronicles... I said, get over and drive, now. Jeremy? Jeremy Park? I'm Jerome, actually. Now drive. All right, all right. Central, this is Soren. We have a code red. Code red. Soren, we only show Agent Hawk moving east on 22. What is your emergency? An officer outside said that he saw a man get into the car and they drove off. I don't know what you think you'll accomplish by taking me hostage. I don't need the IDF on my back, Agent. And you're the IDF. Hawk is exiting onto E-47 North. She was at a high rate of speed, but seems to have slowed down now. Copy. E-47 North. Tracking shows that you're right on them. There's nothing in front of us but a truck. Pull in here. Go into this garage. So what now? Now, Agent Hawk, you're going to be my guest. Central. We searched the truck and found the ring. Well, Agent Hawk, I see you're still alive, and you haven't touched your bread or water. And I'm certainly not going to drink from an open container. Please, don't drink all of my water, please. <sighs> Oh, I can't reach him. And now, episode 19, Chain of Destiny. All right, Kate. Assess the situation before you formulate a plan. He's out of reach. But he's on a runner rug. And I can't reach it with my hand. But... If I lay out completely, I can reach it with my feet. One under and one on top. Squeeze together and pull. Oh, God, Parks, you need to lay off the carbs for a while. Come on, stair climber, I didn't do all those hours for nothing. Come on. Yes! All right. Keys. So much better. Here. Here's a nice bracelet for you. There. I hope you enjoy your setup here. Sorry, but you already drank the water. All right. Car keys? Ah, yes. Communicators here. Yes, and the necklace. And the diary. Kate, are you all right? Soren, am I glad to see you. How did you find me? The truck driver remembered that you took the Orsle exit, which narrowed our search down. Shortly after that, police found Park's car parked a couple of blocks away from the Grease residence. We found a map of Orsley with three properties circled. We had a roadblocks covering all avenues of escape. We figured he had to have a place to stay close by. If he was going to hold up somewhere with you, how did you escape from Parks? He's in there, chained to the wall. When he wakes up, you can ask him. I have the diary in the car. Ah, oh, my car. I hope you didn't hurt it too much. Listen to this guy. I get kidnapped, chained to a wall, and he's worried about his car. Yes, but Kate Hawk can take care of herself. My poor car is defenseless. Listen, I'll get Borg to get parks ready for transport. You use my phone here. I can use cell towers to get to the stip for relay to central. I'm sure they want to hear from you. Thanks. Soren, what is the situation? Your newest agent managed to drug Parks and escape. Agent Hawk? Well played. Well played. Thank you. Soren and Borg are getting Parks ready for transport. I suppose you'll be sending some of your people to handle this. Yes, until we 
we can arrange the proper channels and papers, tell Soren to have Borg transport parks back to the safe house. We'll pick him up from there. It will give you a chance to perhaps get additional information from him. I must tell you, Agent Hawk, this is one after-action report I can't wait to see. You mean you've got paperwork on your side, too? I'm afraid so, Agent. Police work isn't police work without paperwork. You would think that with both Von Longer and Parks in custody, I'd be content with closing this case. But I'm not. There are just too many unanswered questions. Like if Von Longer came back to this side to destroy the Stips, why didn't he do it on the other side? That's where the control rooms are, and that's where he really needed to hit them. And why did Parks come to our side two different times and end up as a clerk in a small grocery store? It just wasn't adding up. But most of all, what were his and Von Longer's connection to my father? I hope answers will be forthcoming when we get back to the safe house. Well, I must congratulate you, Detective Hawk, or should I say Agent Hawk? I underestimated you. No, Parks. You overestimated yourself. So how did you do it? How did you drug me? That pen you took was just a pen. Injection needles are old school, Parks. Now, what is so important in this diary that made you kidnap an officer at gunpoint? Well, I wanted to reminisce about the good old days. Listen, Parks. You're facing serious charges here. You kidnapped this agent at gunpoint, and you took my car. You took the man's car, Parks. Plus, you almost made her wreck it. Almost wrecked it. Came this close. So you better start talking. The diary. What is so important about the diary? It's not just the diary. It's a record of all the movements of personnel out of Denmark to Sweden. Most were young Jews, downed pilots, anyone who was considered an enemy of Nazi Germany. The notes have all the personal information gathered, mostly to use for forging papers and identification documents. Why is this information so vital that you have to resort to such drastic measures to steal? Well, it did contain information about me, although most of it was false information. It recorded my attempt to go to the U.S. with Von Longer. It was noted that I would instead be sent to Sweden to connect with a group that would be able to contact the 8th Air Force and eventually be sent back to England. But you didn't go, did you? I managed to slip away that night undetected. I made my way back to the Torborg Tower Stip and hid in the upper loft, hoping there would be a transfer soon. Then I saw them bring in Von Longer. He was unconscious. That's when I realized that the men coming after him weren't allied, but were a group from my universe. And it didn't take you long to figure out that they were only interested in getting him to reveal his research. And to give the bomb to us. Believe me, Agent Hawk, our side is just as untrustworthy as your side. If that bomb were to be developed, it could get into the wrong hands. You know we wouldn't let that happen, Parks. We wanted that technology locked away. Yeah, so you could use it later. Back to the diary, Parks. It showed that you were to go to Sweden. But you didn't. Which means I was missing in action. That diary would show that I wasn't missing in action. It would show that I was alive and a deserter. My files would remain active. It's easier to hide people when you think they're killed in action than if you just ran away. How did you manage to get by security once back at Central? I was still in the system when I returned. I used my scan ID badge, then went into hiding. Why did you leave in the first place? My research into nuclear power wasn't being taken seriously. I knew of Von Langer's research on your side. A close friend worked at Central and told me about how concerned our leadership was, so I decided to come and find out for myself. So you stowed away on a stip, just like you did at Tuborg. Yeah, but unfortunately for me, the only stip I could board sent me to Manhattan. So I joined the Army Air Corps and took advanced gunnery training and soon found myself shooting down Germans. I got a toy gun and badge for Christmas, grew up and went to Baltimore and became a detective. That's ridiculous. Why do you say something like that? Because... You going to Manhattan to join the Air Corps so you could get shot down in a B-17 ditch in the sea, get discovered and rescued by the Danish underground, so you could be taken to a safe house and meet Von Longer, is even more ridiculous. Oh yeah, Parks, that's believable. Soren, look up the date he was shot down and translate for me. Well, it just so happens that I was looking for that very entry when he was talking about going to Sweden. That part is in here. But so is something else very interesting. April 17th, 1943, an American B-17 crew member was pulled from the sea. He was the only member found. He arrived here shortly after 1500 hours. The airman's name was Parks. He was a small man with ginger red hair. He was badly wounded with a shrapnel in his right eye. He would 
very likely be permanently blinded by this. Red-haired and blind in one eye parks? It gets more interesting, Agent Hawk. April 18th, 1943. We went in the morning to check on Parks, but his bed was empty. It appears he may have wandered off in the night. You one went to search for him, but found no trace. He didn't wander off, did he, Parks? Or whoever you really are? Look, I was disoriented. I found my way to another safe house and made my way to Hellerup, where I boarded the Torborg ship. As a redhead? There was lots of blood. He was mistaken. Where is he? Where is who? The real Jerome Parks. Where is he? Did you kill him and take his place? Answer her. You had to kill the real Jerome Parks and take his place, so you could go back as him. You found out that Mrs. Gress was in negotiation with a publishing company to have the diary made into a book. And you knew that if we saw that book, we would know that you weren't Parks. It wouldn't take us long to find out your real identity. And I'm betting you want it for something. You're both crazy! I'm Jerome Parks! Run my print, Soren, and you'll see I'm Jerome Parks! Prints can be changed. DNA cannot. You remember Pierman telling you that they pulled DNA off Parks' toothbrush. The database had been compromised, and we knew that it only matched a missing man. There was no name, place of birth, nothing but it matched an unidentified male. Presumed drowned. Yes, are you telling me they've tracked down the missing man? Well, Agent Hawk, say hello to Manfred Kingman. Professor Manfred Kingman. Applied nuclear physics. Then who is Professor Jerome Parks? I'm guessing the same. He obviously hacked the personal file system and changed all reference of Kingman to Parks. But what about colleagues, friends, family? They would know he wasn't Parks. So, Manfred, how did you do that? By staging his own death. I've scanned for his name and found this article. Famed nuclear physicist Dr. Manfred Kingman was believed to have drowned Friday when his cabin cruiser was found listing heavily in the bay. An extensive search is underway, and Coast Guard officials have now called off the search for 32-year-old Manfred Kingman. They are now calling it a recovery operation. So, Manfred, you left enough trace DNA on the boat to identify yourself, but altered the records to hide your true identity. Who is Manfred? We'll find out the truth, Agent. I'm taking him to a secure holding area. We'll transport him back to Central first thing in the morning. And this time, you won't have to sneak onto the stip. Let's go. This isn't over, Hulk. You're gonna want to know about your father. Borg, get him out of here. You will want to know. We can make a deal. We can make a deal! Do you think he really knows anything, Soren? It really doesn't matter right now. We don't make any deals. He's going back to prison. Back to prison? When he returned as Jerome Parks, he was arrested for illegal use of a stip. He went to the same prison as von Lange. That's where they compared notes. And he decided to end the stip program together. But that was too early to have met my father. In 1947, he and von Lange managed to escape. He says that an unknown female, posing as a clinical nurse took the two for supposed treatment of an illness they both faked. They time warped for eight years their time, but 55 years our dimension time. Only the two men were captured on their return. The woman escaped. Wow, 55 years is a long time for an arrest warrant. So that would put them both back in jail close to when my father arrived. Yes, Parks or Kingman served an additional 12 months for his escape then disappeared after his release. Somehow he had to have stolen another stip, then ended up back here. But why? This time loss and gain is too hard to understand. The question is, why would he go to Baltimore and get a job in the very store where the stip crash landed? That just doesn't make any sense. The stip he stole should have landed in either Cambridge or Martin State. No, it doesn't. Altering its path is like driving a train off its tracks. You, you can't control the landing. And his story, and Von Langer's story, about coming here to destroy the stips doesn't make much sense. Even if they destroyed all of the stips and pads, couldn't Central replace them and establish new pads? That is an excellent observation, Agent Hawk. I see now why they chose you to become an IDF agent. 
Well, I'm not real sure I'm cut out to be one. Speaking of them, I'd better get my after-action report ready. Do you know if they want just a narrative or... Agent Hawk. Nelson? Why are you calling me? Kate, you have to get back. Barnes, he's been shot. As Kate's first mission ended in disaster, will Barnes survive or does she go on without him? Find out in the next episode of The Hawk Chronicles, Death's Door. Sweet Sue has been tied to the railroad tracks. Will our hero save her? Well, of course, the hero always prevails on Thriller Thursdays. I'm John Bell, the hero that rarely prevails in Bells in the Bat Free, the comedy show you can hear every Friday Follies and a bunch of Sunday showcases. Oops, looks like the hero may have been a tad late there.